right everybody we got to run up here to the supply house get some pipe got some measurements got what i needed and uh you guys situated here it's right up the road if they're open i'm gonna run out there and see if they're open gotta get back over here and get this baby wrapped up this guy he's been very patient on waiting on me to get this thing finished up for him but super nice guy he's out here mowing his grass today man it's rain it's rain and uh we gotta run over here and fix some stuff probably carrington said i gotta go up here and fix some stuff that's all we do is try to fix stuff but anyway i'm babbling on uh, i just want to touch base with you guys a little bit and uh, i don't know if it's making it on the big screen or not but I haven't put in out any videos here lately. It's uh seemed like on this stuff I'm spinning my wheels on this thing. But anyway, I enjoy it. I, I really do. But I've been under the gun. You know, I was a couple videos White uh Weston left us a while back. White he's what he's got going on in his endeavors is um he's working two days a week, which is a great help to me. He's got some other things going on with him and his wife and their businesses that they've got going on and uh don't much blame them for any of that they got to you know their young family got to do what they got to do and uh but anyway we're just kind of on the tail end of this thing of just getting getting stuff we've got promised tidied up on a big job up in weston up there working uh, it's it's kind of a hodgepodge putting it together is nothing that's ready at one time it's a big new construction big house it's a three three point some million dollar house which is a beautiful home glad to be a part of it but those those projects like that sometimes are not what they're cracked up to be it's, it's push and shove got deadlines got to do this got to do that but but anyway i've been on that job off and on for the last four weeks uh it's starting to come together i'll start phase two on it probably in two weeks uh we've got a big project over to school getting ready to take off but anyhow that's that's where i'm at i'm not taking on a bunch of big work i'm, I'm you know back working by myself about three or four days a week but this, these gas prices and the price of the material is just unreal. It's every time you go get something, you can't price a job because you don't know what it, you don't know the price of what it's going to be. You know, I, I priced the job six months ago. I said, you know, the price still good. I said, there's no way. And he said, well, you know, um, he said, I understand, but we got to get it pinpointed. You know, I said, well, when are we going to do it? He said, we're probably still another two or three months out. I said, I can't, I can't do it. And uh, I said, can you price a roof four months from now and guarantee the price? He said, no, I said, I can't price my material. Sump pump, all the material that goes along with it, fittings, uh, fuel prices just went up. They, they're coming down a little bit, but uh, it's just tough. Talking to a guy the other day, he said, you know, he said, it's, it's fuel ain't that bad. He said, it ain't, it ain't bad. He said, it, you know, you know, everybody pays their fair share. I get that. You get, you, I, I get that. But what I realized, he was, he, he told me, he said, you know, what, what's an extra 40, 50, 80 bucks a week? What, what is that? He said, $800 a year, $1,200 a year. I said, also, I said, that's good. I, I said, that's good. And that's the way you look at it. You go to work, you come home. You don't have to go across town. You don't have to go to Winston. You can choose where you come and go. You and your wife can choose where you come and go. But my work, when me and Weston and White, there was a lot of days we rolled out with over three trucks, two machines, three trucks. And you think, oh, you know, hell ain't that much. When the price goes up and it's and it's already costing you it's already costing you 60 65 55 60 dollars a day in fuel gas for each truck then you put about you put about 50 percent more on top of that 
you're looking at hundred dollars a day per truck not counting the machines the little machines we run we can run the fuel way it is now we, we can we can run about i don't know if we run two machines hard we, we can we can do 60 70 dollars worth of fuel and that's nothing compared to what a big backhoe or track hoe burn they 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 big track hoe they'll burn up they'll burn 50 100 gallons a day easy easy if they run a big old pan they they, they run through that i've heard my buddies talk about the what their fuel bill went from 10,000 10,000 a month to 22,000 a month and uh, it's just it's just tough it is tough it's not like we drive to a warehouse or we drive to a office building and we get out and we go and we can pack our lunch and we don't go we pack our lunch so we don't have to get off the job anyway but what I'm saying uh, it's tough stuff and the cost of materials is just tough. Everything's gone up, grocery's gone up. And believe me, I'm not I'm not fussing. I'm not fussed, I'm not complaining. Every day I open my eyes, hell I'm I'm blessed every single day. You can tell I ain't missing no meals. I ain't, I've never been hungry in my life. Never. Never don't know what hungry is. Not with not done without a whole lot. Had to work for a lot. But had hadn't went without pretty much anything. But uh, I'm just ranting right here a little bit. I don't know. I, I, I see these folks every day, and they complain. They're, they're gonna complain, complain about something every single day. It don't matter. The moon, the moon didn't come up at the right place. To uh, rain here, it didn't rain there. Too much rain. These people looked at me wrong. Damn, it's just something all the time. My thing is, my thoughts is. Damn, yeah, just suck it up. Just suck it up. Mom might get me a ticket right here because this looks like a police officer. No, nope, it's not. I ain't got my seatbelt on. I better put my seatbelt on. Wouldn't that be something? Get a $300 ticket here on a Saturday morning. Yay. I need to wear this seatbelt anyway. Uh, anyway, I'm babbling on, folks. I just... But I, ain't, I haven't been on YouTube. It's the jobs that I've been on. Some of them I can't film. I, you know, uh, too many people on the jobs. Um, another thing too, I'll be honest with you, when I show up on the job, my main objective is to get the job, getting in, getting out, so I can get on to the next one. It's not, uh, I'm, not I'm not set up to have somebody follow me around and, video and then that would be that would be nice. It'd be nice. I'm trying to talk Beth into it. She don't want no part of that. And I'm not gonna push you but, but it'd be nice. But this thing it's more it's more of a hobby to me. I sit and watch them things in the morning. And uh, like I said, one of these days my grandbabies if that's YouTube still around it I they might be able to pull up see Grandpa, Peppa, Grandpa, whatever what they call me. Somebody asked me a few times. What do you want your grandpapers to call you? I said, I don't call you Grandpa, but it don't matter. As long as they call me, it don't matter. They only call me something, it don't matter. We working on something a little bit different right now. Nobody knows it but me. We working on a little bit something different. We're going I love to fish. I love to crappy fish. I don't bass fish. I don't catfish or anything like that. I don't striper fish. I love to crappy fish. And it's all because my grandpa took me when I was little. My grandpa, he's, he didn't say a whole lot. He knew a whole lot. He didn't say a whole lot. But it didn't matter what time of the year it was. We could go down there. He could put us on the crappy. It didn't matter if we was walking the bank. It didn't matter if we was in a boat. We always come back with a uh, five-gallon bucket of crappy. And usually, Grandma fixed them things, fried them things up. We eat fish at night. We come back home. They taught me how to fix them, how to flay them, how to catch them. I love the crappy fish. But I'm I'm going to get back into that. And I don't know if I'm going to do any YouTube on it or not. It's probably not. I'm going to try to get one and take some of my grandkids fishing. I'm thinking about getting some pontoon boats. I'm ready to get a pontoon boat. Best terrified of water. When me and her started dating, I had an old bass boat sitting real low to the ground. She loved to fish. She 
absolutely loads of fish. But she'd get in that boat. I called her up, say, Beth, I said, where well, yeah. She said, I'm at the house. I said, you want to go to my house, get the, get the boat ready. I said, I'll be in there, me and you hit the lake. We, we was, we was, we could be, I could hook up to the boat and we could be pulling away from the dock down there where I live in Denver in about 15 minutes. That's me parking the truck. That's me launching the boat, cranking it up, going back, parking the truck and the trailer, going back down there. But let me tell you what she do. I said, Bill, I'll be down, I'll be in there about, about 4.30, 5 o'clock. You wanna go fishing? She said, yeah, I'll be ready. Oh man, she had a she had a little picnic for us, had sandwiches, peanut butter crackers ready, had an ice chest ready. She'd go down to the country store and get us a bucket of menace. She'd have all the rod and reels in line, just sit there in the boat ready to go. All I had to do, all I had to do was back up, hook to that trailer, didn't even have to go in the house. We'd ready to go. And we'd go down there and fish till dark and enjoyed it, she really enjoyed it. But what I did not know, that she was terrified of that boat because it sit low to the water. Sit real low to the water. And, um, and I'd be doggone, I'd dang you on this place, closed up like Fort Knox. I'd be damn, I gotta go to the big box store. Whoa, yay, ain't that something.